Welcome to Covers This Puck Props with 14-year NHL vet Carlo Koliakovo. What's up, bud? <laughs> you tell me, Mr. Hot Stuff. Hot Stuff. Oh, yeah. Victory lap in that Edmonton win. A uh, couple people there. I, hey, I said I'd give you credit where credit's due. If that game came in, I would give you the nod, and you were right on that one. Good for you. Yeah, that's why. I, that's why I listen to you. Don't worry I know. about it. Could have went south. It could have went south. <laughs> but uh, no, we hit, well, I hit that kind of right on the head. I think it closed as a pick 'em. The number was indicating obviously that McDavid wasn't playing, and I think when you look at a player that's worth like thirty-five points, McDavid is worth about as much as home ice, a, a little more. Uh, it's kind of extensive for one player. So happy to jump on that. I don't know about you, but when I'm betting. And I'm looking at uh, seeing who scores on the NHL app. I always like to slowly see, like I'm the same way. Right when I you see, see when I see Austin like, Matthews' forehead, oh, right? Oh, you're like, that's oh. Austin Matthews' forehead. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So I saw yeah. JT Miller slide first. I'm like, give me that Garland assist. Oh, I know. And I didn't. And I went to sleep. But he got he got a goal, so he got that. But we didn't get the other one. Uh, solid three and one plus two point four five units. That's uh. It's been a it's been Solid a hell of a night. run. Solid just, night. just the show in general. You are the commonality between all of the winning. So let's get things going. All odds coming via sports interaction. Let's go. Hi to everybody there in the chat. Yes, sir. A B, haven't seen you back. Glasses are back. We're hot. Darren folks. Good morning to everybody there in the chat. Lucky, lucky. Let's go. Toronto, Jersey. And I'm gonna have to get your take on it. I think we can agree. You and AK talking this morning on First Up on TSN 1050. If you don't know, these guys do a show 6 to 10, 6 to 10, Monday to Friday. That is a that's a shift and a half, by the way. Tell Four hours that. to wake up at that hour and be on air and on point for four hours is a you know what it is, Josh. It, it the challenge of it is doing a four-hour radio show with just two voices. And we are the only show in Canada that does that long with that many people. So it's a challenge. It's a challenge. It'd be great if we had another voice. Like if there was a third person. I'm in. I'm in. It would be is, so much better. <laughs> you know, I did get a shout out today. I heard that. Thank you course. very much. I was driving my kids to school. Out, and I'm like, hey, did you hear that? And my kid's like, no. I'm like, yeah. oh. <laughs> but we're hit, we're in Toronto. It's point night, and I was alluding to your show because you guys were talking about the excitement that it is point night for the Leafs. It's point night for Matthews. The chase is here, and this number is moving significantly. But Matthews for a goal, minus one thirty. We're playing it was just minus one twenty five. This is the best price on the board at Sports Interaction, and then we're going to go with the line mates who are wildly priced here, plus one seventy for half a unit for a Domi assist, and plus one ninety. For a Bertuzzi assist after he deposited that empty net goal, he's not he's not he's not looking uh, thirty four off anymore. Both of these guys, like you could hit this in one play, you know what I mean? And yeah. and that's something that is legit today. Oh, I have I have a SGP Matthews goal Vils to assist. That's ten to one. Wow, that's good, man. Sixteen goals, seventeen games versus New Jersey over his career, scored in six straight. Everybody knows the push is on. He would probably like to get it done to 70 before the last game. Uh, Multi-goal effort is coming in here. But my point to you, I know you agree that it is point night. New Jersey's eliminated, right? You mentioned on there about the deflation of Jack Hughes. Is it after such a disappointing season? It's not like New Jersey's going to be like, hey, okay, no more pressure now. No, now are like players like booking their trips. Talking about their summer plans now, is is it checkout time for the Devils? Yeah, I don't know if there's necessarily trips that are being booked, but there's definitely summer plans that are being discussed because they're officially eliminated from the playoffs, right? And now it's just about getting through the rest of the season. Depending on what player you are, it's either getting through healthy or getting through that so you can add a couple more points to your to your stats so that, you know, it, it solidifies whatever season you had you know, your expectations for, but this has clearly been a lost season for the New Jersey Devils uh, right from the start of it. A team that had a lot of expectations coming in. I think they were the, the they had the third best Stanley cup odds to start the season. This is a team that 
I think they have a 50 or 60 point differential than from their season last year. So um, team wise, so it's been a draw, a, a massive disappointment, massive drop off. And I think now the reality of where there are is kind of re- refreshing somewhat to the group because there's only a couple games left. And now it's just a matter of just getting through these last couple of games with whatever goal or mindset you have in mind. Yeah, but let's go. Matthews for a goal. That's that seen like minus 150 in other spots. So sports interaction with well, the AK, best AK brought up a good point this morning. Like, I don't know why Matthews isn't being treated like the Christian McCaffrey touchdown in the NFL, where it was like the last half of the season, he was like minus 250, minus 300 to score a touchdown every game. Yeah, the like McCaffrey's left. touchdown probability, probably like 75 to 80 percent. Matthews yeah. for a goal, not there, but it's. It's better than – it's about 60%. Well, it's a 30% implied probability is what they're saying with the minus 130, right? Holy shit. Did you just drop implied probability? <laughs> Holy fuck. The man's growing. I like to hear that. We need to clip yeah. that one. Mr. <laughs> analytics. Let's no, go. But you're right. I, I still think it's it's still too short. And it's funny that this, this popular of a bet is still holding some value. I mean, at minus 130 – it's what it's implied about 52, 53, 54%. This is better than a coin flip for sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's, let's get the tag alongs and, and I'm happy to get the tag alongs and, and Domi and Petusi are priced this way because they don't get PP one time, but guess what? That PP one's not scoring. And this line is one of the best at five on five and New Jersey is certainly giving it up at five on five ranking fifth worst in five on five expected goals allowed. So there's a lot to like. Columbus, Florida, moving on. Speaking of nobody, Jet Greaves, bud. I mean, it's uh, evaluation Crazy. time. It's evaluation time for Columbus, who are giving up the most shots per game over the last 30 days at 37 per game. Florida, comfortable. Florida could get the early lead. That means Florida could be leaning on the bottom six a little more, giving the big boys a little break down the stretch because it's going to get physical for them very soon. Anton Lundell, he is five and one to the over on his two and a half shot on goal prop over his last six games. He is plus 135 to get four or to get three shots on net today. Like I said, great matchup versus the worst shot on goal allowed team. One sided game could force that bottom six to get more minutes. Jet Greaves, like I said, could be in net. So there could be an early lead for Florida. Is load management a thing down the stretch more so now, I think, where, I don't know, let's say the Kachuk line, the Barkov, he's been in and out of the lineup. Like, those guys could see a reduced reduced shifts down in the third if they're up 4-1. Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. It all the, this, this game could have game script written all over it, but I almost treat this Lundell prop like Braden Shen last night, right, where – St. Louis got off to a four nothing lead and Woo. Shen had zero shots after the first period. Like, Oh boy, this might be one of those like dump it in and change type of games, but still found a way to get three in the second period. Uh, cash our bet. I almost feel like this could be the same for Florida. And the thing with, with, with Columbus is on paper, you're probably looking at this and saying, Oh yeah, there's going to be a walkover game, but, but Columbus finds a way to, to, to score goals. They find a way you know, to put a little bit, put a little pressure on teams that they're playing because they can score. So you wonder if this is going to be a little bit more of a high scoring game than maybe we predict. And that could bode even better for uh, Lundell and his shots on goal prop. But I think for Lundell too, like the absence of Verhage, who is probably their trigger guy outside of um, Reinhardt, who's got 53 goals. Reinhardt doesn't um, shoot though. He, he still no, has, you know, like, he doesn't shoot. He's yeah. he, he's his shooting percentage is probably pretty good because he scores on a lot of the shots that he takes. But for Lundell, um, you know, centering that second line right now, I think that's that's huge for him. Right now, uh, last time I checked, Lundell was down with uh, Lusterinen and Evan Rodriguez on the third line and playing. PP. Okay, so if he's playing third line, that's even a better matchup considering who they'll get on Columbus, which will probably be. A bunch of young players, I would think. No, it's it's a third line, and that line could do some damage in the playoffs mm-hmm. if it stays together because it's tough to match up versus those three. Uh, you got 
a guy like Rodriguez, who we've always liked as a shooter, the Val Nichushkin type, big, strong, gets pucks on net, and defensively, they, they can hold their own as well. So Lundell, over two and a half shots on goal, great plus money. Did like Marchenko on the other side. Uh, he'll have a tough matchup, though, but he's even money over two and a half. He's the only guy shooting right now in Columbus. San Jose, let's go picking on San Jose. Why not? It's a freebie. Seattle. And just like we see Slavkovsky heating up, Matty Beneers is heating up, right? Like we're starting to see some of these, what, uh, 22, 23 draft class guys that no one was really excited about at the beginning of the season, midway through the season, but they're starting to heat up a bit. Matty Beneers for a point, minus 125. Outside of Philadelphia, San Jose has the worst goals against average over the last 30 days at four per game. Regression is not coming. This is who they are. Beneers has eight points over his last five games versus bad teams. Anaheim, Arizona, and San Jose, all within a 15-day stretch. Playing on the top line, top power play unit, and now that Shane Wright is on that power play unit and they're giving him minutes, that's dropping Beneers back to the point. So he's now the catalyst on the power play unit versus one of the worst penalty kills in hockey. Is there a coincidence, Carlo, that those rookies, Slaff and Beneers, are kind of heating up at a time like this where it's a push, there's less eyes on you. Does it kind of yeah. work that way sometimes? No, you're absolutely right. And I think, you know, Slavkowski's different because this is his... This is he's, one, he's one year before Beneers, right? Was this his rookie year? No, this wasn't his rookie year, was it? This no, was last year. last year was. Yeah, so we're, we're talking about two guys in their second years that's experienced a little bit of a sophomore slump, as, the, as they would call it, right? And a lot of it is because in their first years, a lot of things just come easy to them. But what's the difficulty in the National Hockey League, there's a great saying, it's easy to get to the National Hockey League. The hardest thing is to stay in the National Hockey League because you have to constantly make adjustments to your game because there's more information out on you every year, right, on how teams should defend you, where your your favorite spots on the ice are, what type of game you play, what you bring to the to each, to, to each game on a nightly basis. And I think that was a somewhat of a struggle for both those players. And we'll focus more on Beneers here because he's a guy that was a candidate for the rookie of the year last year. Um, it's been a struggle. It's been a struggle for him. And I think a lot of it too is it's been a Did struggle. He, for he won the Calder last year. Did he win the Calder last year? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Then my, yeah, yeah. He won the Calder last year. So what do you think is going to happen this year? And I, I remember a, a, a good conversation that I had with, you know, a good, a, a young Alex Petrangelo, who is a good friend of mine when I, after his rookie year in, in uh, St. Louis. And he told me the GM called him in and had a meeting with him. And his first thing he did was he drew a circle around his name on the, on the whiteboard. And he said, this is what every team's going to do. Every game we play, you now. they're going to circle, put a circle around you because you're a guy that they're going to focus on. So what are the things you're going to do to adjust to that? And I don't know if those guys are having the same type of meeting and stuff like that, but clearly the team struggles, um, Co combined with the individual player struggles because Beneers was the guys that Seattle expected to take a big step this year. Obviously he didn't, the team struggles obviously um, uh, followed that. And so what happens now is at the end of the year, when both of these teams right now, they're, they've gone through the first half of the season, they're starting to settle in. Everything's starting to come natural again to them because the pressure's off a little bit. And Slavkowski absolutely taken off. Even Matty Beneers, like you just mentioned, he's starting to feel it again. This is good momentum that you want to see these guys build to finish their season and to follow into the offseason and, and into next season where you hope they find their A game again. All right. The insight says donkey parlay tonight, Toronto, Pittsburgh, Florida, Tampa. Who blows that one up? I, I would hate to say, I would hate to say Pittsburgh just because, but like, yeah. You know how we've been making money betting on uh, – we're all going to get to them, but how we've mentioned when the market is high on these number nine, number 10, number eight teams, they're, they're, they're probably being priced too too well, but we had the Washingtons, right? We had the mm -hmm. Islanders. They all fell. I want to see Pittsburgh go. They have a great matchup today. I like that. Let's get to the last two plays. A couple team total overs that I liked. Uh. And we'll get to the first one. Pittsburgh team total over three and a half plus 105. And the Rangers team total over three and a half minus 120. Let's talk about the Rangers here first before we get off. <clears throat> Sorry, let's go, let's go Pittsburgh first. Alex Leon has 
played way too many games. He's played 28 of the team's last 35 games. Wow. He's, like it, we saw it with Sam Erson. Like we see, you can't ride goalies like this in the league and expect them to play, especially guys like Leon, who I'm, uh, I don't know. He's at best a, a number 25 goalie. Yeah. Like, he's at best a middle end backup. Right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. He's yeah. in that weird range. Exactly. Where yeah. he'll always have a job as long as he's healthy, but <laughs> this is a spot where it's tough. Pittsburgh scoring 3.6 goals per game over the last 30, despite their power play still doing basically nothing. We're seeing the bunting and Geno line starting to pick up some pace. Uh, if you're trying to get Sid points, you keep looking and you're saying, oh, Geno woke up finally. It's yeah. about time. But with everything, the thing I like on this one, with everything on the line, if Pittsburgh is up 3 nothing in this game, Detroit will pull the goalie. These guys are locked in at 84 points or whatever a piece. If one team's up, the other team is going to play aggressively, and that could work both ways for Pittsburgh trying to come back into the game or getting empty net goals. Where do you see Pittsburgh into this game versus Detroit in, like I said, a massive playoff game? Yeah, it's a massive playoff game. If if the other night was any indication between Washington and Detroit, I think most people expected to see more goals in that game, and instead it was a defensive battle. It ended up being 2-1 the final score with Kane scoring with seconds left to make it 2-1. Um, but Pittsburgh has found something the last month or so here in their offense. And is Michael Bunting the, the answer of what they found? Because clearly his insertion into this lineup has created a new spark with their offense, especially with, with Evgeny Malkin. And Detroit's one of those teams that they're so hard to predict. They're, 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 they're a team that, can score with the best of them. And there's also, they're also a team that can give up as many goals in games with the, with the worst of them. So I, I just, in this game, I would just buy the Pittsburgh hype knowing that they understand it's a must win game and their offense has been clicking. And you wonder how much air was taken out of Detroit's wins or, you know, their, their, their playoff hopes. Um, after that loss to Washington the other night, because that was probably a tough one to swallow for them. Last meeting, March 17th at Pittsburgh, 6-3 Pittsburgh win. Yeah. Alex Leone, five goals on 37 shots. So there's some familiarity factor there. Now let's go to this next one. If you watch the show constantly, you know that one of our edges is backing a team that got embarrassed in the other game. Philly fits that mold. However, I think there are extending circumstances where it might not fit this situation. Yeah. And that's where I'm on the Rangers team total over three and a half minus 120 here. Philly has the worst goals against average over the last 30 days. A lot of that had to do with the beatdown with Montreal that's skewing those numbers. Yeah, nice. Okay? But has Torts kind of lost the locker room after you bench your captain? Yeah. And they were talking about it on Spitting Chicklets about. There was no professional conversation with Torts to Couturier to tell him before he told the media. And as someone like that, as a team that probably would flock to your team captain in the locker room, tell me if I'm wrong, would flock to the captain who's on the ice battling with you as opposed to fucking Torts. He was so close to winning coach of the year. Like, <laughs> What an, what an idiot! Like, why would you do no, that? See, you're you're over, you're you're overreacting to this. I, no, I don't. But, think... that, but then on the other side of that, sure, I get that. But at the same, if you want to be logical, Sam Erson and Fedotov can't bounce yeah. back. They're they're like, just a bad goal. Yeah, a lot of people are going to point. A lot of people are going to point the Torts losing the room because of the things that he did as a coach. This has nothing to do with Torts. Torts was trying to push buttons to keep his team engaged and motivated. And going forward, backfired. I don't know if it backfired. At the end of the day, you know what backfired? The fact that the Philadelphia Flyers we'll just don't with. have enough talent on their team. Yeah, like they like anybody who looked at the Philadelphia Flyers and thought they were a playoff team with this roster is delusional. And I said this after the trade deadline when they traded uh, Sean Walker for a team that's competing for a playoff spot to trade one of their best defensemen. That's a reality check, and it's a tough reality check to accept because it's deflating. You're like, oh, man, we battled so hard all year. Now we just trade away one of our defensemen because this team wants to focus on rebuilding and recouping assets the following season. 
And they patchworked that with Eric Johnson. And now I get it. They haven't had Jamie Drysdale available for them. Their goaltending. Look, Sammy Erson is the, is the number one guy, but he's not ready for this yet. And you look at their offense. I mean, what player on their forward group would you consider elite? Like Konechny's great. Tippett's great. Kachuri was has been a mess. That's why they healthy them. I don't look at this as a as a torch problem. This is the this is the talent level of the Philadelphia Flyers finally catching up to him in two ways. One, they won a lot of games that they did this year because they felt they were good, good defensively. They p- played a good system and they were getting saves. When they're not getting these saves right now, now they have to play catch up. They are not built to play catch up hockey and it's catching up to them now. So People want to say, oh, Torts this, Torts that. No, I, Torts doesn't play the game. The, the players play the game, and I saw them at plus 290 to not make the playoffs at right after the trade deadline. I jumped all over it because I'm like, if there's a team you can see falling out of this, it's the Philadelphia Flyers. One, because the teams below them have been playing below average, and two, I just don't think they can keep up offensively with the rest of the teams in their division and it's caught up to them. Yeah. Uh, I know producer Mick just jumped off. He's got to do uh, the following show. More picks coming up at 10 30 with the NBA prop picks powered by EV analytics with John Mettler. That's coming up right after there. So mix out. Uh, I'm happy that you mentioned that about torts. And that's why I had the backup thing about, about the goaltending. Like yeah. it, it, they obviously tried to ride Ursa too hard and this, and it's backfired. And that's why I think, the Rangers can put up four just yeah. because of what's on paper for this Philadelphia team. Mm-hmm. And, and if you want to add anything on the torts, sure. But in that same situation, on paper probably means more. And Urson and Fedotov or whoever starts in net, neither goalie's in a good spot really to shut down a New York team that is could be scary to play. Guys like Lafreniere and Jack Roslevic are going to be big for that New York team playing on the wings of those top two mm-hmm. lines. Uh, I get Penguins and playoffs at uh, seven to one. Appreciate everybody there in the chat. Yeah, Let's go, go Pens, quick rundown. Uh, there's probably a lot of people that hit that market two weeks ago, and it's nice that it actually has a somewhat of a chance. Good luck. Yeah, it's it'd be a great story following last year, but is it is it going to be funny if they like melt down in the last game again on oh, the year? Oh no, last game of the season, oh. a Chicago layup. I got I got to look I got I got to do a quick rundown here, but I uh, I'm going to pull up the covers matchup page real quick cuz we got to be off the air in 1 minute. But uh NHL, head over to the NHL, head over to score and matchups. I'm going to Pittsburgh. I got to see who they're playing the last game of the year. Please don't be <laughs> Chicago. No, it's a tough one. I think the it's Islanders. Islanders. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's where it is. So this is what we're on. Matthew. And think about it. If, that's, if that game's for a playoff spot. Big. <laughs> Matthew's goal. Good. Freebie. Domi. Assist. Bertuzzi. Assist. Hopefully we get it in one shot. Anton Lundell in Florida versus Columbus. Over two and a half shots on goal. Plus 135. He's five and one to the over in his last six games. Matty Benier showing life. Playing with Bjorkstrand. All-star Oliver Bjorkstrand. Get that right. For a point. <laughs> minus 125. And then a couple team totals. New York Rangers over three and a half, minus 120. Pittsburgh over three and a half, plus 105. Boys are heating up. Appreciate everybody there in the chat. It's nice to know we got everything back on track. When I came in, three and one yesterday. We keep going. Today's Thursday. One more show Friday. And then next week, a little weird, but we'll keep you scheduled on the idea of what it is. Don't forget to stay tuned for the NBA player prop picks with John. We'll see you back here tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Lead us out, bud. Ciao. Happy Masters Day. Masters.